You're on everything now. You're on the 17. You're on the Us Weekly. Oh, you're on. Great. Oh wait a minute, that's not you. And that's. You're in the uh, Most Beautiful People. You're in. I have like three teen peoples here for some reason. I have a problem. <laughs> but congratulate. I mean, are you Thank comfortable you. with this? Are you, yeah, the Us Weekly thing's a little weird. Things get weird, but, you well, know. Well, I didn't actually read any of this. No, it's but, okay. Don't read it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Something happened I don't know about? No, people just, I guess, when you're at an age where you're going to be a little, you know, when you're 18, it's different than being under 18 because you can do certain things. Yeah, it's weird because it's just a so, couple months difference, right? Yeah, people kind of find things to write about you and make you feel bad. But. What is it? Because I was doing a lot of bad things when I was 17 years <laughs> old. And, I mean, is there anything like that? You're, are you looking forward to turning 18 so that you, it's not such a big story that it's... Um, I don't, I don't know. You don't know? I, I want to show you something. <laughs> um, there's some very um, lovely pictures of you. Of oh, course, God. we just saw... We saw this one, very attractive. Uh, there's some others. And I want to show you a picture of myself at age 17. <laughs> and there I am. I'm the, one, I'm the one holding the stick. I don't know why I had a stick in my hand, but I had a lot of sticks when I was a boy, and that's Cleto standing next to me, our band leader, who's now become a mariachi, very, so very successful shorts. mariachi. Yeah, they are. Now, would you date uh, a 17-year-old Jimmy Kimmel? Is this something you would... <laughs> I mean, just take me in, just, and imagine how much fun I was at that age, too. What do you think? I, I don't know. I didn't know you when you were 17, so mm -hmm. I don't know if you were nice. Or I was just like this, really, except I wasn't fat. You're not fat. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Well, okay, you're just looking for, like, the whole sympathy point. Right? No, I, no, I you wasn't. the compliments to flow in, because you're pretty established, man. I don't think it's going thank too you. bad. Thank you, thank you. But at the time, all I had was the stick. <laughs> it's true. Congratulate! And what happened? Now, how old were you when you started acting? Um, when I started acting, I was like seven. What happened to your seven. twin from the parent trap? Is she out of the business? Because she was terrific also. I thought she was equally as good as you were, uh, to be honest with to be perfectly honest. She's back in London. She's back in London? <laughs> so you, uh, you started as a, a child and you ho you're homeschooled? Mm -hmm. Were you homeschooled the whole time or did you go to real school at all? Um, I went to regular school up until 12th grade. So then I started Oh, you did the yeah. whole time. Yeah, and it was just because I started working more, so it was easier to be home. So did you get to go to like homecomings and proms and that sort of thing? I did not go to prom, but I went to a bunch of homecomings and stuff. So. I didn't go to any of them either, but I all, I went to school, <laughs> but for obvious reasons, as you can see. <laughs> so you you uh, you did you just took off your last year, your senior year of high school? Um, yeah. Were just, you bummed to do that? You're ready to get out already. I was. Yeah, I was kind of. It was just getting hard because I I would be in and out of school, not knowing what was going on with my friends. Couldn't go to like the parties on weekends because I was working and that kind of thing. So it just was easier to focus on my academics, get it done, and work. Have you kicked all your regular friends out? And now you've replaced them with only no. famous people. <laughs> no. no. No, my best friends are my friends that I went to school with because they know the most about me and they're still my friends. So. Yeah. So they hang out with you. They don't sell stories about you to magazines and stuff. One of my recent friends did. Who's not my friend anymore? Is that right? Really? <laughs> yeah, this guy I thought he was my friend, but I shouldn't be giving him publicity, so forget it. <laughs> no, yeah, wow, no, but I could beat him with my stick. I still have the stick. <laughs> if you want, I'd be happy to do it. Now, you got to do. I couldn't imagine. It, it's interesting to me because I couldn't imagine hosting Saturday Night Live at 17 years with old. With your stick and everything. Yeah, you could with, have done the, a sketch <laughs> with the stick, though, right? I definitely have it with me for security, but I couldn't imagine. Doing that, were you re were you really nervous to do it or no? It was it was kind of scary. It's you don't think about it until you get like once you get through the table read on Wednesday is the table read and that's the scariest part. Um, just because no one really laughs at the table read, it's kind of quiet and they're just waiting to see what jokes would. Don't be the fun. writers who wrote them laugh at all their own jokes through the yes, whole thing? Yes, they do. <laughs> yeah, they do. So you got the one guy you always know who wrote it. Yeah, and it was like one of my friends wrote a funny skit, but no one really laughed at it. So I was like, oh man. So bad because like I gave him ideas for it. So oh I was really? Like, it was my fault. Did you bring? Was this one of your high school friends? That wrote no, no, no. It? He works. He works at us. Oh, okay. He works. All right. Yeah. Good. Because yeah, my friends have some ideas for the show. Might not go over. <laughs> no, too my well friends with, and I did Michaels. think about ideas. No, seriously. Oh, you did? Yeah, I brought ideas to the table. And did they do? They produce any of your ideas? For the monologue, we used some. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah. So you just got together with your friends and said we got to come up with some ideas for Saturday Night Live. I was actually thinking about that for a while. I was like, what would be funny to do? <laughs> so no. Wow. But um, obviously their skits were funny. 
funnier than mine. And well, you never know. You never know. <laughs> you know, I was concentrating all my efforts on getting a fake ID, I think, at that age. So <laughs> it's really impressive. It's unbelievable. We'll talk about your movie, Mean Girls, which is this huge, huge hit. And uh, all the kids love you and all the perverts around this office love you, too. So we're right back. Uh, Lindsay Lohan is here. And also, we're going to check in on Cinco de Mayo and El Guapo. We'll be right back. Cinco de Mayo, or whatever. You're not Mexican, are you, Lindsay? No. So is this? Do you celebrate? Does my red hair make me? <laughs> you celebrate Cinco de Mayo? Um, I, my friends do, so yes. They do. They do. Well, my I'm friends do now, too, so as you can see. Really. Cleo, the band, for some reason, wanted to wear mariachi costumes tonight. I said you'd look stupid, but they, they insisted. So you're, uh, you got this movie, Mean Girls, and mm -hmm. it's, it's doing great. I had a feeling it was going to do very well. Really? Yeah, I did. Thanks. Did you or no? I don't like to think like that oh. because you may think it's going to be like awesome and then it could totally suck. So. And Tina Fey wrote the movie. Yeah, she's she's amazing. And and you worked with her obviously on Saturday Night mm -hmm. Live last week. Yeah. And it's uh, and the movie is about the mean girls in high school, the yeah. girls, the clique, and that whole thing. And you're not one of the mean girls. I be I'm not a mean girl, but I kind of get caught up in everything, so I kind of become a mean girl and then get nice again. And it's a funny movie though. It really and you, is. at the end, you kill all the mean girls, right? <laughs> yeah, you let out the secret. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't I mean, mean to. Ruin the ending of the film. I think we're gonna look at a clip. Do you know what the clip is? Yeah, this is um, when I meet the, uh, meet the girls in the cafeteria. I like the guy that one of the girls is kind of seeing now because she knew I like him. So this is what happens. Here we go, Lindsay Lohan and Mean Girls. Why do you wear your hair like that? Your hair looks so sexy pushed back. Katie, will you please tell him his hair looks sexy pushed back? Regina was dangling Aaron in front of me on purpose. I knew how this would be settled in the animal world. <laughs> This was girl world. Your hair looks sexy pushed back. There you go. Does it make you uncomfortable to watch this film? It's just weird. Yeah, it's a little bit weird. Yeah, I don't want to see myself. It has to be. But his critical. hair did look sexy pushed back. <laughs> Do you have a boyfriend? No. You don't? No, I don't have <laughs> That doesn't mean she's going to be dating any of you. I have bad news. <laughs> To mean. What? Well, I mean, look at our audience. Let's get a shot of the guy with. There's a guy who's got curly from this Three Stooges tattooed all over his body, but and he's one of the more normal members of the group. No, what? Would you be willing to date the audience? Because we can. I mean, we can have a bachelor style contest. I think they're too old for you. I don't do a think. segment of finding a boyfriend for me. We can do a whole we'll reality show. When I'm 18, show. because. We need help here at ABC. <laughs> if we could put you on, you could be the next Bachelorette. I can pull some strings. <laughs> Believe me, I can make that happen. I'm no 17. problem. I'm 17. I don't need to be committed right now. <laughs> oh, we'll tape it. It'll be fine by then. Uh, so, so um, yeah. So you do not have a boyfriend. No. You have plans for the summer. Um, I'm working. I'm starting a new movie August 2nd. Oh, you are. So, yeah. oh, but do you have a I little just time out, off like, or five minutes ago? Do you get time off or no? Um, I'm probably gonna be. Meeting with labels and recording and stuff. So. Oh, you're doing an album. Yeah. You're not gonna go to camp or anything this summer. No, <laughs> I never did the camp thing. Yeah, I never did either. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, you were too busy. My parents were too cheap. <laughs> no, it's like if after high school. Why do you want to be in camp the whole summer? Like. That's right. We didn't need camp. Right. <laughs> as long as we have our sticks, we're fine. <laughs> so, um, we're gonna take a look at. Uh, I know you probably. You've probably, since you're 17, never been inside a bar. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you what a bar, what it looks like inside a bar. And you'll see what you have to look forward to in three years Yay. from now. All right? We're going to take a look at uh, El Guapo, Cinco de Mayo. We'll come back with Lindsay Lohan. Porn is going to join us a little later, and uh, music from Kinky tonight. Uh, but before that, it is Cinco de Mayo. Uh, it's a big holiday here in Los Angeles, and uh, there's a bar called El Guapo. And uh, let's go live now to El Guapo. And there is, uh, there are the uh, the revelers, as they call them. See, Lindsay, that's what a bar looks like. And you can see that's what a piñata looks like as well. I've seen them. You've seen those? Oh, okay. yeah. 
And these people are under the influence of alcohol. Um, <laughs> right now, they're preparing to take swings at Piñata Misterioso. This is a piñata that is filled with an unidentified item. Um, it's actually a live baby chihuahua, so I hope she's really careful. But um, we're gonna spin the folks around, and you are gonna, uh, yes, all right? Oh my God. She's taking swings, she's blindfolded at the Piñata Misterioso. She was not able to hit the piñata. <laughs> they get piñatas full of beans and they just smash them open. Every night at the bar? Every night at the Every bar, night? that's what happens. Wow. Yeah, this is no exception. I can't wait. All right, well, that, that was, um, well, that was ridiculous, but uh, it's still got the mile. What are you gonna do? We're right back with America's favorite new movie star from the movie Seeing Other People, Jonathan Davis of Corn. We'll be right back. the show tonight. They're going to play in our a bar at Cinco de Mayo. Our next guest sold more than 20 million albums with his band Corn. He's got Grammys. He toured with Snoop Dogg. Now he parlays his movie star good looks into a part as a drug dealer in the new movie Seeing Other People. Please say hello to Jonathan Davis, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got my, I have my movies totally mixed, yeah, mixed up. Hey, you're in this movie, who else is in the movie? How long did you work there? I did that for like six years. Look I look back totally then? different. I look yeah. like that picture you just... Oh, people are enjoying the delicious refried beans they found in the Piñata Misterioso. Uh, and thanks to uh, the folks out at El Guapo. Good times being had out there. Good times here, too, I tell you what. Got a great uh, bunch of people here tonight. Lindsay Lowen, uh, Mean Girls, in theaters now. Thank you, Lindsay. Very nice. And uh, don't believe anything you read about her, right? Right. 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 Exactly. Jonathan <laughs> Davis, believe everything you read about him. Yeah. Uh, seeing other people is his movie, and he's good in it, too. It opens uh, limited engagement. This, what does that mean, limited engagement? It means it's not that many theaters, I guess. Not that many, but if you're lucky, it'll be near you on Friday. Open Kinky, movie. this is their CD right there. It's called Atlas. You can pick that up in a store that sells them. Tomorrow, Ozzy and Sharon Osbourne are here. Brian Cranston is here. Now Plano's off the air with the song Son Tami Primero Amor. Here's Kinky. Good night. <laughs>